All right, guys. So today I want to try and build my new cart reader here. Uh, this is, if you're unfamiliar, this is the uh, cart reader designed by a gentleman by the name of Sani. Uh, it's an open source project. All the the files, the schematics, and the code are up on GitHub. Uh, it's a really, really, really cool cart reader. You can use it on uh, Super Nintendo, uh, Mega Drive. Uh, Nintendo 64 and then on the bottom here there's a Game Boy slash Game Boy Color slash Game Boy Advance cart reader uh, it's very modular it's powered by an 18650 so you just turn it on start using it it's a super cool thing um, however I find myself using it probably 99% of the time with just the Game Boy cart reader portion and this whole unit is pretty modular so I decided hey I'm gonna try and design my own cart reader here and so this is what I came up with this is my prototype here there are quite a few um, fixes that I had to make this most obvious one is this wire just running across the top here uh, if you look inside there there's a couple other fixes I had to do uh, let's see if I can angle that better now well nonetheless uh, and I designed this one too to take 18650s, but at the time I just didn't have any, so I assembled it with a cell that I had laying around and it sticks out and that's probably not good. But this is just a prototype and it does work pretty nicely. You turn it on, so on and so forth. Um, but one of my one of the improvements that I made with this reader over this one, aside from the fact that this is you know a third the size. Uh, this uses a micro US or excuse me a USB-C port for charging. Uh, it does have built-in battery under voltage protection, which I'm not 100% sure if this module does. I've never tested it, and I did end up adding my own battery meter just in case. But um, this way, I don't have to worry about it because it has. It just uses a, a TP4056 based charge module on there. Uh, it has standalone voltage regulators, uh, modules that you have to solder on instead of surface mount components, um, and it uses the smaller uh, Arduino embed module. So this is the size of the Arduino instead of this big guy in the bottom, and it is quite literally a third the size. Uh, so. All in all, it results in a much smaller cart reader. Now, I'm pretty happy with this design, but apparently the version, the software versions older than version 3 do not work on the embed version of the Arduino. There's just something, some weird incompatibility. Uh, but ever since the library update to version 3.0, it seems to work fine. So while I was trying to troubleshoot this one, I ended up making this module. Now it's largely the same thing except with some of the uh, the fixes that I had to make manually already implemented, uh, but also, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but the lines for the cart reader end up looping all around going to the back of the Arduino here, so I reposition things to to make the 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 wiring a little bit more linear instead of having to take the scenic route. It does result in a slightly larger footprint. This blue board is, oh, it looks like it's a little bit thinner actually. Um, the height is the same, but it's slightly thinner. However, on this original design, the 18650 sits flush in the footprint of the board, whereas this new design, it does not, it sticks out. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get to the actual fun part, the build here. So to make this, uh, and this is probably going to change, I've already got ideas in mind for a revision, but we'll just go with it for now. To make this, you need the board, of course, you need one of these Arduino embed modules uh, with the USB port. I believe the footprint is the same or at least similar enough for the one without the USB port, but it's like a dollar extra for the one with the USB port and it's so much easier to program. I've already program the software to this. Um, you can do this before you assemble or after you assemble, uh, but I've already programmed the software to this. So 
that's taken care of. You need these little toggle switches here and I'll post a bow of materials. But you just need two of these and they come in like a 50 pack for a couple bucks. You need, of course, this cart reader here. Uh, this is the one part that's kind of sketchy because you have to get it off AliExpress or eBay or something. Uh, and I don't know if the supply of these will ever run out or what have you, but this need that for this build. Uh, you also need this specific 5 volt voltage regulator and of course I'll, like I said, I'll post the bill of materials and links and everything. Uh, you also need a generic 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, this is the one I have. I used a different one on my original design. Uh, this one is significantly smaller, but anyway. Um, you also need one of these OLED LCDs and either a micro USB or excuse me, micro SD memory card expansion for Arduino or you need to build Sani's SD expansion card for the Arduino. This one in particular doesn't work. Don't know what I did wrong. Did something wrong with it. So I'm not going to be using it. However, I am going to be including the support for it because I do plan on switching over to these SD cards because I have a bunch of low capacity SD cards and my smallest micro SD is like 32 gigs and that's just a little ridiculous for Game Boy. Uh, after that you need a couple uh, surface mount resistors. You need 10k 0805 size resistors. Uh, I have some left over from an extra project. In the next revision of this board I'm going to include pads for uh, through hole resistors instead of just the itty bitty ones for the surface mount but that's for next time. Uh, you also need a battery holder and an 18650 if that's what you're planning on using uh, otherwise you could just solder straight to these pads and use whatever the heck you want. Uh, what else? Oh and you also need either two of these little buttons here or I designed it to work with either uh, Cherry MX switches or these new Kale low profile chalk switches uh, or it should work with Alps but I don't have any Alps switches to test that out with uh, and then you could just use the switches as is or throw some keycaps on there. Uh, I'm going to be using these switches because I like them a lot better than these little itty bitty surface mount ones. These ones are just kind of a pain in the butt to use and the bigger switches just make it so much easier. So anyway go ahead and get started building this. I probably left something out unintentionally and if so, well, I guess I'll cover that when I get to it. Okay, so I'm going to start off by soldering the stuff to the bottom of the board first, specifically the charger, the voltage regulator, and the battery uh, uh, holder, I guess. So this board itself, I cheaped out and I didn't get the uh, gold plated boards, but for something like this it really does not matter other than looks. So I'm going to start off, the pads on the board itself are already tinned, so I'm going to tin the pads on this battery holder. Just flood those with solder, try and get both sides here. And actually, before I solder that on, I'm going to do the small boards first. So specifically, uh, no, I'll do the voltage regulator first. Just start at the top. So I had to make a custom footprint for this thing. It's actually a really cool little voltage regulator. I really like the footprint and I chose this one in particular because it can do more than like 300 milliamps or whatever the hell the, the standard was on uh, most voltage regulators. But the uh, V out minus and V in minus, these are just ground. So you can use the ground pads on the top here 
to connect with those and then V in goes with this pad V out goes with this pad so it goes down like that so try and do this let's start with the ground but just one pad at a time here just flood it with solder And then, once you get it lined up, try and heat both pads simultaneously and you should be able to get solder to flow. Right now I'm going to do the opposite corner here. Oh, wait, before I do that, let's make sure this still fits because I put these pretty close together. There's a little bit sticking out on this other board here using one board to try and smooth down the other. Okay. And of course you don't need to solder both these ground pads, but I'm going to do so just to make sure that it's nice and secure. so soon. So this top pad isn't connected to anything on the board itself, but all six pads are there so that you can still solder and have it nice and secure. I'm going to start with that pad. Of course that already stuck down. Just want to make sure you get the board nice and aligned because once you get more than one pad soldered down it's going to be a pain in the butt to reposition it. And just make your way through. You get all the pads. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can use a micro USB module instead of USB C if that's your jam. But half the point of designing this module, in my opinion, was for the USB C. Okay that soldered down. Now let's do the resistors. Okay, so I've got five left, but I only need two. So we're gonna be okay. And my tweezers. Apologies if you can hear that dog in the background. Uh, my neighbor just got a new dog. Don't know all the details, but apparently they think it's okay to just leave it locked up all day while they're at work. And I've been trying to have a word with them about it. But they don't work when I do. So we're never home at the same time. But that is completely beside the point. Okay, that's one. 
and you need these resistors for the buttons. Without these resistors, the buttons don't work. Probably should have just done one at a time so I don't accidentally lift the other while trying to get both pads. Okay, I think that is going to be okay. All right, so next, this side is the uh, negative, the minus, this side is the positive, the plus. The battery is the same way, or the battery can, can, uh, holder has the same thing. You got a little plus marking on this side and a little minus marking on this side. Also, it's keyed, so it only fits one way. So get that lined up. Maybe, there we go. one side and I did it slightly crooked oh well I'm just gonna flow some fresh solder into both joints just to ensure that it's nice and happy You gotta give that a second once you take your iron away because this is a big joint with lots of solder. Takes a second to solidify. Okay, there it goes. So far, so good. Now I'm going to add the 3 volt regulator. No, I'm not. I didn't foresee that happening. Maybe I'll just put that on top. So you gotta make sure you got your uh, pins lined up properly. I labeled this so the, pin, the pad on the left is the five volt input, the middle is the ground, and the pin on the right is the three volt output. And you can't really see the label once you got the battery casket installed. But I'm going to insert this into there so I can. Ooh, that's not working very well. Okay. So this is why we make prototypes so we can figure out what stuff does and does not work and what stuff you neglect to consider. This would go in that way. Or we just put it on top. That seems to work the best. I'm going to not do this at the moment though. Because I want to do everything on bottom for oh well already got everything on bottom. Um, I guess, next let's start soldering these things. So I got plenty of double row female pin headers uh, in both, what is this, two by eight and two by three. So you can get away with using just the 2x8s and the 2x3s. Of course, I'm only going to solder these one at a time. But just as a uh, little proof of concept there. Those fit in like that. This is all standard pin spacing too. We need two of the two by eights, or well, more than two of them. So 
we need four of the two by eights, and I made a slight miscalculation. Because so I only have, oh, but wait. Oh, that's a, what did I mess up here? Oh, I know I had a messed up. You don't need that last pin. These aren't spaced very well. I'll have to find different parts. Can't quite put them next to each other. Well, that's fine. We'll go with plan A. If you want to socket your Arduino, then you want to get the right sized pin headers. These don't work. I'd assume these were like the, uh... oh, that's what they're for. These are for the uh, SD module. Okay, well, we'll come back to that then. So for your Arduino, it should come with plenty of pins here. These are the double row ones. These soldered in. And then you'd solder this on. And that'll fit just like that. However, before you do this, if you're using the Cherry MX or the mechanical keyboard switches, you need to do those first. Otherwise, you won't be able to get to the solder points. So I shall do those right now. I like to do just one point and actually put pressure on the other side and redo that point to make sure that it's lined up and straight and flat. And I do the same thing with the other one. It's a little bit more solid. Oh, Captain Hindsight, I shouldn't have used the board with the defective solder mask. That's no fun. Oh well, too late now. A defective solder mask, I just mean there's a bit of a line in the solder mask, going right where my thumbnail is, all the way across the board. It's 100% not noticeable once you've, get, once you've got the whole thing actually soldered together. But it's still no fun. And that second point is a little bit of a, a little bit tricky to solder because it's, it goes straight to the ground of the board. But oh well. Okay. So now. I'm going to flip these over, so I want the long side on the bottom. I'm not going to bother trimming the top side. And it doesn't sit 100% flush anyway. Okay. So 
the same thing with my switches. I'm just going to do one corner to every part. Those ones aren't even in the hole anymore. Oof, that one's bad. Okay, so that one's in straight. That one's in nice and straight. And that one's in nice and straight. So next up, you're ready for a soldering montage. Just gonna double check that didn't move. Yep. Well, let me do the opposite corners first. Then it's soldering montage time. I'm going to do this wonderful thing that I do on uh, all my other videos too, where I don't actually edit this, so it's going to be real time. I suppose there's no reason I can't trim these flush once I got them soldered. I just don't really want to.
Make sure you don't accidentally bridge any of the pins. Doesn't matter so much if you bridge these 3v3 or the 5v5 as long as they're not bridged to each other. Like 3 to 5. But 3 to 3 is fine. But those are like the only pins that you can actually bridge. Okay. Now I'm going to add some switches. And you can put these on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. I'll just do them at a time. You can do this the Clive method. Maybe I only get one of those. Okay. And this isn't working either. Nope, just kidding. Just fine. All I did was squeeze the pins a little bit so that it wouldn't fall out the hole. switches. Oh, and it's a lot less clicky. I wonder if I just got super lucky with that or what. Uh, does that cover that? It does not. Okay. So next I'm going to go ahead and solder on this screen. Oh no, I'll save that for later. I'm going to solder these for the uh, SD reader and I thought I had an oh it's right here so you only need one or the other you don't need both uh, I am installing both because at the moment I do not have a working SD reader but at some point I would like to have a working SD reader Oh, now I dropped the micro SD part. It's all right.
and again you can trim these flush after you get them soldered down. No real reason not to. I'll probably do that later once I'm done installing this. I can't really do that on camera anyway. When you use flush cutters on these little pins, they uh, they fly off at the speed of sound. Little sharp metal bits. Uh, not really good for your eyes. So I tend to like hold the whole thing in the trash can while I'm using my flesh cutters. That way most of them get contained. Oh, I see a problem. Soldering the uh, voltage regulator might be a little bit of a pain in the butt now. Kept in hindsight. I'll do that next. But yeah, just remember out is 3 volt, in is 5 volt. Apologies if that was uh, hard to see. It's not a huge deal if you melt the plastic a little bit on uh, any of these, but ideally you do this before the uh, memory card holders. Okay. Oh, you know what I should have done? I could have just soldered that straight on without even the holders. So what you can do, because these come with the uh, angled brackets, uh, you can either desolder those and replace them with the proper brackets, or headers, excuse me, or just bend them. I find that that works for me. And then that goes in there. And see, it hangs a little bit low, but it doesn't hang lower than the battery, so it's not that big a deal. Additionally, once you get these bent, you can uh, trim these. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. That way it sits down a little bit lower. So there's that. All right. If you do decide to solder this straight onto the board, you want to make sure you get the screen and the, uh, the LED, if you choose to include it, soldered first. So now we'll do the screen. So with the screen, there's these two little uh, selector pads I guess they are uh, 
forget exactly what they're called, but that's because this, this screen in particular comes in two variants. On mine, the leftmost pin is ground, followed by the voltage. Uh, so on here, for the leftmost pin, you want to short the bottom two pads together, and then on the right pin, the top two pads. Otherwise, you'll have your voltage and your ground facing the wrong way around. OK. Once you've got those two, you can insert that. Solder here. And you can leave that angled up or you can push it down flat. I'm going to leave it angled so that it's for sure not touching any of the pins. The Arduino. Of course, you can angle it flat. You might want to put some uh, insulation down, though. Cool. So that's that. coming together. All right. So I'm going to have to rethink this. Don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'll worry about that later. Uh, oh, forgetting something kind of important here. Gotta solder that down. So this doesn't fit flush with the board. There are these crystals here that stick up kind of significantly, those are going to sit flush against the board. But you don't have to worry about like insulation or anything because the only pads down here are the buttons and those are way off in the center where nothing should interfere. So you can push that down nice and flat-ish. And time for soldering montage number two. It would also be wise to test this, but I'm not always wise. So, just for shits and giggles, I ended up tracing the little Suicune crest on the back of Japanese Pokemon cartridges, and I have a SVG of that. I ended up exporting that to KiCad, the software I used to design this PCB, and I put it on the silk screen 
of this board. I, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to see what it would look like since technically my design is inverted. Um, the original design itself is actually using an inverted silk screen, so the design itself is created within the negative of the silk screen, and uh, mine is the opposite of that. So, but I, I just wanted to see how it would look on the board. It's kind of covered up, but I still think it's pretty cool. I'm going to try and put it on more projects in the future. I'd just like to go over these pins a second time, make sure that the solder has flowed properly and not just balled up on the pin itself. solder entirely.
nearly there. So, I guess I'm going to do the LED now because I have, there it is, because I have it. So on this particular LED, there's a uh, common anode, sorry, I always get anode and cathode confused. Anyway, the positive voltage is common, and then each of these grounds is for the different colors. So on this particular board, I have, I just have the one pin labeled, and you just got to stick it in. So the longest one goes in the pin, la or the hole labeled VCC. And you can, of course, use one of these numbers if you want your LED to be removable. But quite frankly, I don't, I don't know why, but it would work. Okay, so I'm going to stick this nearly all the way in. Oh, I'm gonna stick it further. bend it that way. Yes. I like that. And of course I'll have to trim these in a bit, but first they have to be soldered. Now, my flesh cutters, which I don't know where the nice ones are at the moment, the shitty ones I broke, so I'll just use these. They're not quite flush cutters, and they're not working at all. Cool. I'll be right back as I go get my flesh cutters. And drop some stuff, apparently. Okay, so I got my flesh cutters. These are just, what, CHP 170? Yeah, CHP 170. Highly recommended for the price. I think I got them for like five bucks on DigiKey or something like that. Which, oh, five bucks, he's recommending them for the price. Well, DigiKey does not have free shipping. So if it's your only order on DigiKey, the only thing you're buying, it's, uh, you're not going to have a good time. Alright. There's that. And one last component here. And I also went and grabbed the double-sided tape because we're going to need it. This needs to get soldered onto here, but I didn't include the little cutouts for these little locating nubs, nor did I include the anchors. So what you need to do, and I'm not going to use my flush cutters because that's an abuse, take some pliers and you can pull those right out, and then take your flush cutters and cut these nubs off. You want it as flat as you can possibly get it. There's only two nubs, but in this case, two nubs is two nubs too many. And then you can just solder it down like that. It'll fit flush, it'll be happy, but I like to take some of my uh, double-sided tape here, and this is also left over from another project. I'm going to stick it across the bottom here. To ensure that it does not go 
anywhere. This is super sticky stuff. This is 3M 300 LSE. I use this stuff to attach the screen permanently to my Surface Pro tablet. I had to replace the screen on it after I tried selling it and it got damaged in shipping. Okay, now just gotta make sure you got all the pins lined up and you can press it down. Now it's time to solder. Uh, for something like this, I think it might be best to use some flux, but I'm going to try it without first. Just to see what happens. Yeah. Nah, we're using flux. Same flux I always use, this Qualitech PF400. Smear that on there, I'll clean it up later. Bigger the gob, better the job, something like that. And part of the difficulty I was having is because I put this voltage regulator in a stupid spot. just want to double check that every single pin is soldered down. You're going to have a bad time trying to troubleshoot this otherwise. Those all look good to me, but there's only one way to find out. So I'm going to put my micro SD module back in. I'm just going to borrow the SD card from my uh, other reader here. See, 32 gig, a little bit overkill for something like this. batteries I usually just put a bit of tape over the end so they don't short because I kind of keep them all in all together without any other protection on them it's probably charged though because I don't take care of my batteries should and so this side with the little nub is the positive and the flat side is the negative double check you got that lined up properly and drop that in there and let me get a cart here we'll just use a Japanese crystal that I have stick that in set it to Game Boy Color turn it on oh 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 that's not good but so far so good I mean, it could just not recognize. Oh. Oh, this cart reader has the same problem my other one has, where the uh, not sized properly. You can kind of slide the 
part around along the contacts, which is probably why it's not working. Closer. I don't know what PLCSXSU is. Yeah, this is going to require more troubleshooting. At the very least, I need to clean that up. Um, and there's still still a few more things to come. Uh, but at least, you know, this LED is working. I'm happy with that. Party mode. Um, but anyway, the goal here, eventually I'm going to make a case for this so that you're not just holding the bare parts here. Um, I want to try and make this smaller, but I don't know how I can. Maybe I can compress it a little bit this way, but I'm kind of limited by the constraints of the battery I'm using. I could use a smaller battery. Uh, there's another thing, another revision I've got planned where instead of using this drop-in Arduino module, I'm using just the bare chip itself. But that's of course going to be a little bit more difficult to solder. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to play with it and uh, I'll report back I guess. Let me try one more time. Ah, oh, wait, ROM type not found, ROM size not found, that's not good either. Could just be the game though. Let's try... Oh, that game doesn't even work, that's... I'm pulling games from my uh, broken pile, so that's probably not the best example. So let me try some games out of my Game Boy instead. This should be Pokemon Prism. Hey, that recognized. So it's probably just the cart then. Let's see if we can get a dump. don't recall, but I'm pretty sure that LED is supposed to do something while it's dumping. Oh, just kidding. Calculating checksum. Checksum matches. So yeah, we got a clean dump. That's fine. Um, let's try Game Boy Advance. Swap it over to 3 volts. Turn it back on. Hey, look at that. Pokemon Emerald. Oh, let me turn this light off. I'm sorry. Oh, well, I kind of expected there to be better light. Okay, well, let's get a dump of that, too. Just to double check. Oh, that's why I was getting confused, because the Game Boy Advance LED goes crazy while you're dumping. Fingers are a little bit sticky from the flux. So I'm taking advantage of that to pick up all the parts. And Game Boy Advance takes a little bit longer to dump. The ROM is significantly larger. Pokemon Prism is like 2 megabytes. Pokemon Emerald is like 32 megabytes. Plus, I'm pretty sure when you have it running at 3 volts, the Arduino itself is running at half speed. But I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure how that works. I haven't really looked into it yet. So it takes a little bit, but that's okay. 
I just want to double check that it works. And yes, technically these switches are upside down, but that's okay. You can still put keycaps on there just fine. And uh, I'm thinking maybe at some point I want to put LED openings just because I think that would be fun. But, uh, you know, maybe route this LED to one or both of those switches. And uh, check some matches. So we're all good to go. Well, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up, maybe trim down some of the pins a little bit. Uh, especially on the bottom here uh, but otherwise I'll go ahead and post the files to this thing uh, on YouTube description I'll probably just upload them to Dropbox or something until I get a github or something set up um, and I'm not gonna post the source files until I get this to a point where I'm happy with it this is revision 1.1 that's probably not coming until 1.3 knowing my methods here because I'm especially not happy with the positioning of this here. I can I can always desolder it and then run some leads and then just stick it down to this empty spot. Um, in fact, I might actually go do that just now. But at the very least, I need to clean up this flux, put some cool keycaps on here. And, well, I think that's it for this one, actually. I need to finish up the casing, of course. But I guess that's all for another video. So uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching.